Hello, I'm Paul Lambus and welcome to our first episode of Culture Scope, featured on Cypress Mail's new interactive web portal Good Living. Our location for this week is Tombs of the Kings, a UNESCO World Heritage Site located two kilometers north of Bafos. Used by residents of Nea Bafos during the Hellenistic and Roman periods from the 3rd century BC to the 3rd century AD, these tombs are unique in Cyprus, being heavily influenced by ancient Egyptian tradition when it was believed that tombs for the dead should resemble houses for the living. Carved out of solid rock and some decorated with Doric pillars, about 100 tombs have been uncovered for public view. This magnificent site is open throughout the year. It's wheelchair accessible and charges a minimal admission fee of approximately two euros fifty per person. We all know that Cyprus has countless must-see sites that usually grace the pages of colorful brochures and tourist guides. But sometimes it's the places that we don't think about visiting very often that hold the most magical appeal with the power to both surprise you and transport you back in time. Cyprus is known for many things, gorgeous beaches, meze, and the fact that it was the first place in the world to domesticate cats. Rail travel, on the other hand, is something really associated with the Mediterranean island. Yet between 1905 and 1951, the Cyprus government railway carried more than 7 million passengers and an excess of 3 million tons of goods across the country. Alongside passengers and goods, the Cyprus Government Railway was an essential mail delivery tool and it played a significant part in moving troops and ammunition during World War II. Proudly perched along the edge of a Virico village, this sandstone station gleams expectantly as if a train will arrive at any moment. The Avrico station is now a railways museum, one of its kind on the island. Original documents, drawings, photos and various objects related to the Cyprus Railways are exhibited in the museum rooms, as well as scale models of the main stations and rolling stock. Open Monday to Sunday, admission is free and is wheelchair accessible. In a vast world of 7 billion people, where all you hear about are our differences, there are some important things that connect us, and one of these is food. Hundreds of TV shows, movies and podcasts revolve around the topic of food, and cookbooks always sit among the bestsellers. Food is even part of how we interact with others. And who hasn't posted a photo of their favorite dish on their social media channels? The talk of food is all around us. One of the things I love about Bafos is its reputation for good eateries offering excellent cuisine. The grill garage in the centre of Bafos' picturesque promenade is up there with the best, serving a variety of grilled meats and dishes, South African style. Kula, the grill garage has been around for 10 years in Bafos. What would you say is the key ingredient to the diner's success? The ingredient of our success is, of course, our food, which is very, very important to me. I'm very hands-on with my food. The concept of the menu, everything comes from me. I'm very passionate about the restaurant. I'm very passionate about my customers. I love my customers. I have a lot of time for them. Personal service, really long hours, hard, hard work, but we reap the benefits. You've been in the restaurant business all your life. What inspired your passion for the food world? So we grew up amongst a very strong woman, my mum. And over the years, we all used to work in the restaurant. We all used to earn our pocket money. We all used to have to go to work to help the situation, which was wonderful. We all learned a lot, and I learned a lot. I was very, very involved in the, in the Three Sisters, and from that, we opened up the Cafe Three Sisters underneath in Hilbra, which was so successful that nobody could believe how successful this restaurant was. So we got all our knowledge from that all our knowledge from that and from there we moved on to 
second restaurants, third restaurants, fourth restaurants, fifth restaurants, until I made my final move to Paphos. Your ribs are renowned across Cyprus for their barbecue perfection. What makes the perfect rib? It's an entire art that takes between three and four or five or six hours depending on your volume. So this is our, how our fresh meat arrives. Local, local, local. We don't use Spanish, we don't use from Belgium. We use only fresh local products. Fresh local products. So you're not going to tell us what's in your secret sauce. No, I'm I going to cannot. try and get that out of you later. How do we prepare this beautiful baby and get it to the final product that you serve okay, your clients? Okay, so we've cold brined this already. Right. Okay. Donna, what we're going to do is we're just going to quickly marinate a little bit. So we're going to add our salt, which is now this is sea salt or sea, uh, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. And then we just add our secret spices here, which is a combination mm, okay. of all beautiful classes. All right, now I'm not going to... I'll just use a bit of paprika, a bit of cayenne pepper, a little bit extra. And a little extra. bit of this and that yes. to get that. Yes. Okay, perfect. Yes. Bay leaves we already have, but we can just add some there and some fresh rosemary as well, which is already in our water. And then we lower it very gently, flat, straight down, so it doesn't curl. Up. This is going to boil now for approximately one hour and 15 minutes. So the whole process of the ribs takes three to four hours. Then we cover it and we let it simmer. This is our sauce, homemade. We have to mix it really well before we actually serve it. So you have to marinate, flip, marinate, Okay, while we're busy doing that, what we can now do is prepare the onion rings. Some flour, secret sauce, and in they go. The perfect setting, the perfect meal, South African wine. It doesn't get better than this. Cheers. Cheers. Wow, bravo. Mm -hmm. Located at the heart of Limassol's downtown, in an area that's rapidly transforming itself into a regional playground for the elite, Leptos Estates is developing a new game-changing seafront development that's set to transform Limassol into Europe's new Riviera. <laughs> It is within the Leptos Group involving DNA to invest in prime land and create extraordinary destinations with a global appeal. The Limassol Blue Marine is the flagship development of the Leptos Group, the epitome of quality. With world-class facilities and services located downtown, by the sea, by the marina, virtually in the heart of everything. This most exciting investment location is destined to become Europe's new Riviera. Leptos lifestyle at its best.
Cyprus is officially on the map as an up-and-coming film location with the launch of a new incentive scheme and film commission. With its rich historical and natural landscapes, local talent and some of the best incentives in Europe for both local and international producers, the island is ready for its close-up. Cyprus offers a truly cinematic environment and has set the scene for those with vision. Now, all that's left to do is shout action. Jason, as a filmmaker from the US, what inspired you to relocate to Cyprus and Neapolis University in particular? Well, it's okay. So it was two things. My, my father is originally from Cyprus, so I had some family roots here. Um, so it's always a very beautiful place to visit with my family. So I've been coming here for many years. Uh, as my film career sort of took off, I guess, I was looking for opportunities um, in arts education, like teaching filmmaking. And um, I taught a little bit back home in the States. Uh, and then this opportunity came up to teach uh, full time in this course here at Neapolis, and it was brand new as well. So, arts education programs really changed my life in a lot of positive ways because I think film is a very powerful medium and um, it can be used in a lot of positive ways. So, I think the positivity coupled with the mentorship and how art changed my life, I think it gave me a new perspective on, on how I could help. So this was a great opportunity. I could step into this role and just try to help out. Like if, if somebody was interested in filmmaking, even at a very basic level, that's, that's, that's all I wanted to do was just help out. So this was the best opportunity that came up and I jumped at it. Neapolis University in Bafos is an internationally accredited educational institution. Can you tell us more about the film course offered at the university? Right, so it's a master's program, it's a year and a half program, very concentrated. All of our classes are engineered uh, to teach anyone how to make a film from start to finish. I designed the program so that anybody with any kind of background that was interested in making a short film, whether it's experimental, narrative, documentary, could do that on a professional level. So we talk about how to plan the film, we talk about how to shoot the film, how to write the film, so technical, pre-production, theory. 90% of the program is practical, so anybody that comes on day one, we just start making, we just start making stuff immediately. It doesn't really matter what your background is, you just learn the craft because I think people have stories to tell and we find a way to help them out. So. The program, in, in essence, teaches someone how to make a film from soup to nuts, from A to Z, Alpha to Omega. The government of Cyprus has introduced a package of incentives encouraging international producers to choose Cyprus as their next film destination. How do you perceive the future of film on the island? I think that anybody that tries to do anything is critical. I don't know where it's going to go, but we're certainly set up for it because I think if there's a will, there's a way. So I think if the right people, I think if we keep the momentum going and we don't let the ball drop, I think it's going to be okay. Uh, so far, so good. We've had a couple projects come in. I'd like to see a little bit more support on the local level, I think, too. Um, just including some of... It would be great if the program could be involved in some of the larger productions that are coming here to give students an opportunity to work on those productions. I think that would be great. Uh, so I look at it from that angle. I don't really look at it from my perspective. I, I look at it through our program's perspective where what's best for them is what I care about, really. So if that incentive opens up doors for them, I'm good with that. And I, and I think that'll happen. I hope so. What would you say to any aspiring filmmaker that will enhance their creativity and or imagination? I think dreams can die if we're not careful. You're the torchbearer. So you're the only one that's going to like keep the flame alive. So if you don't, it can die out. Like it'll burn out if you don't stoke the fire. So it's, it's, it's on you. And I think that accountability also has a lot to do with it because no one is going to we need help, but you're the flag bearer. So uh, you have kind of have to be the voice. No one can, I can't get somebody else to be my voice. I'm my voice, so I have to project that 
and then hopefully get some people around me to help out. So that's why the program is so great, because we can get together and, and try to make that happen. Legendary actress Helen Mirren retraces the life of Anne Frank through the pages of her diary and introduces the viewer to five other women who as young girls were also deported to concentration camps during World War II in the new film Anne Frank Parallel Stories. The 75th anniversary of the Auschwitz liberation has been marked by this heartfelt and valuable documentary targeted at younger people with what is perhaps an educational mission and with this in mind, there is a connecting thread motif. It periodically imagines a young woman traveling by rail all over Europe to various historical sites ending in Amsterdam, posting pictures and thoughts on Instagram, hashtagging key phrases. Anne Frank Parallel Stories is a very substantial and worthwhile film with eyewitness accounts supplemented by robust contributions from people such as historian Michael Birnbaum, and a clear guide to the way that our understanding of the Holocaust has grown, beginning with that historic moment in which it was arguably crystallized in the public mind, the 1961 Adolf Eichmann trial. Written and directed by Sabina Fedeli and Anna Migotto, this must-see cinematic event will be coming to Netflix in July. Stay connected and follow us on social media. If you want to be featured on CultureScope, contact our production team on the email provided below. Until next week, stay safe, stay tuned, and let culture transform your life.